Designers, can we stop for a moment complaining about creative freedom? And let's have a little creative order. That's the topic of today's Design Thinker, using the creative grid to get some creative order. Hi, I'm Eric Moore, I'm the Design Thinker, and today I'm gonna give you a little bit of creative order, especially when it comes to the dreaded word, brainstorming. Yes, brainstorming can be a very scary, annoying, tiresome exercise that you have to do, not only alone, but you have to do it with your client. Brainstorming can go off into many directions, but it doesn't have to be that way. And with today's creative grid that I'm going to show you, it'll help you not only discover what people you're solving for, but what are the possible solutions you could give them to make a better design, a better outcome all around without wasting a whole lot of time and coming out of a brainstorming session with nothing to speak of. First, let's start by drawing out a grid. I'm gonna create a five by five grid and explain each of these components. Let's shrink this down so it make it easier. At the top is focused on all the people categories. These are things that we want to surface about who we are solving for and why. Next, within the rows, we have what I call modalities. These are some of the possible solutions and enablers that can help solve for those people problems. Now, there's also one extra little box up here, which is a secret surprise for later, but let's move on. Now, if we bring the grid back up, let's take a look at the top section of the people categories. These could be market segments, they could be user personas that you've created or surfaced through research, or this can be the design challenge or the creative brief itself. Here, what I've done is I've tried to break down four different parts of the design brief. Let's move on to the rows. These can be enablers around technologies, places, events, celebrities. These are just a select few. You can come up with a lot more enabler categories, but let's take a look at these for now. So technologies like drones or AI, places can be physical places or virtual places, events, parties, and of course, celebrities or influencers or people of interest. So if we combine these together, the idea is that when you look at the people categories along with the enablers, you're coming up with ideas. That's that creative order I'm talking about. You have clear boundaries of where these two intersect. Let's take, for example, building a brand. We're looking across business people, maybe single parents, some accessibility concerns, and all up communities. Again, this is just a lightweight example. There could be lots more people categories, but for now, let's just focus on these. What we wanna do is think about ideas that intersect between the people and the enablers. In this case, if I look at technology for business people, they're on the go, they're fast paced. Maybe using the Apple Watch is a great way to boost our brand or make our brand presence known. Uh, when it comes to accessibility, we want to check all of our websites or touch points. Are they appropriately colored or designed for this community? And then communities that build themselves around a brand or a topic. Where are they? Are they online? Are they pro communities? Where can we fit in? If we look about places, this could be a daycare or playground for single parents. If we think about events, maybe it's a networking event or a TED talk in certain communities that have certain interests. When I think about celebrities or influencers, maybe there's a famous single parent who can promote your product because they use your product or they like your brand. Or it could be a guest speaker that comes to one of these online communities. But the grid doesn't stop with single ideas. The whole point is to get you and your client or your team generating multiple ideas across every single cell as possible within the grid. Here's a real world example done on paper in a physical space. You'll notice that across the top, we have the problem statement or the design challenge. 
These are the people focus categories. And on the left, we have the social media, the wearable tech, internal policies and procedures. These are the enablers. And as they intersect, you're seeing multiple ideas emerge across these cells. Now, I also want to show you something else here on the right. This is called the wild card. These are ideas that don't quite fit within what's in the grid, but that's OK. Capture them, write them down. It's important to keep them available because you never know when you might come back and they make more sense. Now, the next tip I want to give you is that you sit in the room with your team or your client and you begin to vote on all of the viable ideas to move forward. And you can sleep on it. Don't vote that same day you've come up with these ideas. Now, here's another tip. And this is actually scientifically proven, where if you incorporate drawings, your ideas are more likely to be accepted, but most importantly, they'll be clear and understood. Here, I've drawn the word gears and a line pointing to the gears, and without the words, it might come off as simple flowers. But incorporating words and drawings have made it scientifically proven that your ideas are going to be more clear and understood. And even if you're not the best illustrator or drawer, that's OK. That's why you use words, arrows, shapes to get your point across. Now, this last little box that I was telling you about, the little surprise, I like to use this as a fun little competition among me and my clients and my team about how many ideas we can generate. Here we add up all the ideas and it's a great reminder of the work that we can do in such a short amount of time. Typically anywhere from four to five people who work straight for 45 minutes can come up with over a hundred ideas. I've seen it happen almost every time and it's a great reminder of the work that we can do in a short amount of time. Next, we want to tally our ideas with sketches. Basically, you're counting those ideas that actually have sketches along with them, and it's a fun little competition to have among your teammates and your clients. Last, I like to add bonus points for those who fill up every single cell, where there's an idea in every single cell within the grid. It's just a fun way to have a completist attitude towards the grid. Now, let's get into the benefits of the creative grid. Number one helps you generate lots of ideas quickly and easily. You know, the great thing about brainstorming is indeed a lot of the ideas, but with the creative grid, it puts some structure in there so that you don't go over time and you have some great outcomes. Benefit number two, it invites input from all, including your customers and teams. I can't stress how important it is to include your customers in this process. Why? Because it becomes them. Their ideas are out there and they're more likely to be open to bigger discussions, feedback and constructive criticism. Benefit number three, stimulates creative and divergent thinking. You know, this idea of design thinking is going out wide and large and getting to those interesting and novel ideas. Benefit number four, let your ideas live and breathe. Look, the idea behind this is simple. Don't be critical of ideas. Don't tamp them down too quickly. Give them some time to breathe. If you don't vote on it today, give it 24 hours, sleep on it, and maybe that idea just might survive. You know, at the Design Thinker, we're always working with young or new leaders who are struggling to communicate with their team. And design thinking is what I'll call the language of work. But we also need the language of life. And that's why at the Design Thinker, we combine the discipline of design thinking with the art of nonviolent communication. If you're seeking to understand the design thinking methods to facilitate better leadership skills, better communication skills, reach out to us at thedesignthinker.org. My name's Eric Moore, and we'll see you in traffic.